Hello there, hi. Um, another vlog for you today and another short story as well, a uh, flash fiction of a thousand words. Um, now, some of you, if you followed my blog, uh, may know that I took part in something called the Advent Story Train, which was created by Ari Meglin, who's someone I've met online. Um, I've actually recorded for their podcast, her podcast as well, which is with Rachel Polley, called The Merry Writer Podcast, well worth a listen, so check that out. Um, now, what we had to do for the Advent Story Train was write a story, a flash fiction, a thousand words, based on the, the phrase, the gift. So that's what I've done. Um, and then, I, I, I quite like the, the, the one I wrote, okay? So um, I decided that I would then put it onto Smashwords, and it's now live on Smashwords, so you can download it for free on Smashwords, before you can only get it on my blog and on Wattpad. Um, so I thought, what better to way to round it all off? Now it's, uh, the Advent Story Train's done, now it's on what part of my blog and now it's gone to Smashwords is for me to read it as part of a vlog. <coughs> so here we go. So it's called The Gift and it's set way back in the 1600s uh, about a man who finds a beast. It could be a woman. I mean, I don't, I don't actually specify, so it's up to you however you see it. Anyway, here it is. This is The Gift. 18th of March, 1678. I found the creature whilst taking my morning constitutional the beast looks in a terrible state. Leg twisted back, cuts down its side. I move closer to inspect, realising it to be some sort of dog. Jet black with dark eyes. At first I thought it to be the devil's work, some creature from the depths of hell. Inside its mouth I saw n sharp, needle-like teeth, but it did not flinch when touched. And its whine showed it to be in considerable pain. Who am I to leave such a poor, defenceless creature to the mercy of the elements? I scooped it up realising it to be smaller than I first thought, a tiny babe of fur in my arms. I knew I could give it little, but the one gift I was able to bestow was life itself. <coughs> 25th of March, 1678. A week has flown by and the creature has gained strength. It grows at an incredible rate, and I must say I am becoming attached. I gave him no name, not wanting to form a bond, but feel my guard is dropping. The cuts on, on its side are mere scabs, and it no longer hobbles on the twisted leg. It shan't be long before I must release him, but I am, t I am in two minds. The creature has no mother or siblings that have sought it out. Maybe I could be its family. I never had children. The death of my beloved Sarah too great a, a weight to bear. Thus my reason for living as a sort of hermit in these dense woods far from, away from civilization. Could it be that be this is my time to love again, that this creature has been sent for such a purpose? 18th of March, 1679. A year has passed since Sebastian came into my life, for that is what I have named the dog. He whined and sulked when I tried to free him. I could have left him outside, ignored him for days, and he would have gained the message. In truth, I feel I need him as much as he needs me. My heart is fuller than it has been in for a long time. His warmth kept me going through long winter nights. He has made me stronger, fitter. No longer can I refuse to take a walk when the frost nips at the ground or rain pours. He does add much joy to such a mundane activity. After Sarah passed, taken by an unknown illness with our babe in her belly, I thought all joy gone from this world. That such a creature as Sebastian can bring me back to life is amazing. Maybe I did not give him the gift, but he presented it to me. 25th of February, 1680. I checked the cuts on my arm, bathing them regularly in water and herbs. They are healing, but every time I look at them, I dread what will come. Sebastian continues to grow, his height almost above my waist. With the increased size comes increased ferocity. I understand he wants to be here with me. He whines and howls when he injures me, but he also longs for the wild. Yesterday was the first time his play fighting drew blood. I fear it will not be the last. Am I to be alone once more? A hermit imprisoned with only his thoughts for company? I will put it off as long as I can. The bitter frosts are holding my hand, making sure Sebastian stays by my side next to a roaring fire. Yet when spring comes, I will no longer have an excuse. 19th of July, 1680. He is gone, and loneliness engulfs me again. I could take scrapes of claws across my skin, the sharp pain and blots of blood. Sebastian noticed every time, stopping where he was and pulling away with a whine. I know he did not wish to hurt me. It is just his nature. Despite long walks and freedom to hunt small mammals, still his playful side appeared. But just two days ago, he sank his teeth deep within my arm. 
The pain became unbearable, and I lashed out, smacking him across the head. I cried as he retreated to the corner, his face sullen, how he curled himself up, attempting to reduce his size. I could not be mad. It is my fault. I should have let him loose long ago. Even though spring came, I kept hold, grasped too tight. When summer arrived, I had no excuse. It was a small mercy that, as I watched, I realised it was best that I lost Sarah and my unborn child. If this is how I treat a beast, how would I cope with a human life? Fate has a way of showing us our true selves. Maybe it is that I am the beast, and not him. 8th of May, 1681. It happened not far from here, on a path to the nearest village. I have missed Sebastian since he left, yet did not expect to see him in this way. So often I am alone, and when I see travellers, we just walk by. I should have thought the hood covering his face an omen. The knife was out and he pounced on me before I knew. I do not understand how I stopped the blade piercing my skin. But for a few seconds he weighed, his weight pinned me down. All my strength was used to hold off the attack. Moments later he was bowled from me and I heard a deep growl. As I sat up the attacker turned and ran. In front of me, a jet black dog. The creature whimpered and turned away. I wanted to follow but knew that not to be the best course of action. So there I sat, understanding that my gift had been repaid. I had once given the beast life. Now Sebastian had repaid the favour. And there we go. That was my Advent story train, uh, a story called The Gift. Um, I hope I took a slightly different path to maybe sort of a Christmassy story and a Christmassy gift and maybe... Uh, love and that, and even different paths to general fantasy, which is, or, or sci-fi, shall we say, fantasy or sci-fi, which I tend to write. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's a link below um, if you want to have a read of it on my blog or on Wattpad. There's also a link below to um, a page on Ari Meglin's website, which has links for all of the stories in the Advent Story Train. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and, and hope you want to read some of my other stuff. Uh, if you do and you're enjoying this vlog, like and subscribe. That's what they always say. Okay. And I will see you next time. Bye.